What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, today we're talking all about the pressure volume loop and how to read it, understand it, and assess it during mechanical ventilation. Let's dive in. All right, so as I mentioned, let's jump in here and talk about the pressure volume loop. That's what we're talking about. What is it? How do you recognize normal? How do you recognize abnormal? How can you use it to help you take better care of your mechanically ventilated patients? That's what all this is about. So let's first of all, before we go any further, you see here we've got a bunch of graphs here. These are all pressure volume loops. This one is normal. So let's first identify what normal looks like and what we're looking at. When we look at this graph, what we notice is, is that we have an x-axis and a y-axis. Now the x-axis is pressure. The y-axis is volume. So what happens is, is when the breath begins, pressure goes in volume increases and then we exhale back up. So we will see the direction going counterclockwise during pressure, positive pressure breaths. Now, if they're taking true spontaneous breaths, then we, need, we know that those pressures are, are negative in nature. And so we'll see it come back behind and then around for true spontaneous breaths not altered by any type of positive pressure. For the most part during mechanical ventilation, this is what you're gonna see. Breath goes in, volume, breath comes out. Now, one other thing you notice here is this is a nice oval shape. It's not excessively wide. This nice looks kinda of like a football and it's sitting on about a 45 degree angle coming off of the corner of that XY axis. This is normal and you're gonna to wanna to recognize this. Okay, now let's talk about abnormal. Abnormal findings you might see is this right here. And what we notice here is that there's this big negative pull on the backside of this breath. That negative pull is what we call a fishtail appearance. And what it means is that the patient is having to create an excessive amount of negative force to trigger the breath. So one, is our sensitivity set correctly? Two, if sensitivity is set correctly, then why is this person generating so much negative force to trigger a breath? Well, the reason that is sometimes is due to neural distress. Maybe they're flow hungry, or maybe they're in pain or anxious. Whatever it is, their neural drive to breathe is distressed. They're telling their diaphragm to drop harder and faster, and it's creating this big negative pull at the beginning of the breath. We need to ask ourselves those questions. Is our patient able to trigger the breath with little effort, sensitivity? Second, are they neurally distressed? You have to find that out, you have to dive into that. Now the second finding you'll see here that looks abnormal is this finding here. What we see here is that as the breath goes in and up, it's supposed to look like this and come back down. But instead, this comes up and over. You see, this flattening out right here is what is important because that horizontal movement says, okay, we're now having to put more pressure increase with little volume change. So you recognize that when things go up, you're getting volume change. When things go to the side, you're getting more pressure change. So as it starts out here and starts going to the side, that tells you you're getting more pressure change with little volume being delivered. It's a sign of over distension. It's telling you that your tidal volume is too high and we need to reduce tidal volume for this patient in this scenario. Those are two of the findings you're gonna be, you're gonna wanna be really, really clear and sharp to pick up on. Sensitivity on the back side, tidal volume and over distension on the front side of this loop. Now, when we come down here to this angle of the loop, to this one right here, we notice, remember I told you that this is supposed to be at a 45 degree angle? Well, that's what we see here. We see that this, this image here gives us that 45 degree reference. But what we see is that this loop here 
is laying further down. It's more horizontal than 45 degrees. And this tells us that we have a decrease in our compliance. In other words, maybe our patient has a pneumonia, ARDS, pleural effusion, hemothorax, pneumothorax, atelectasis. Something is causing pulmonary fibrosis. Something is causing a decrease in compliance. That's why it's laying down more horizontal. Now, as this patient gets better and improves, you will see that this loop that is laying down right here will start to rise back up here to normal. That can be seen as an improvement. So it's always important not just to look at it right here today, but also remember where it has been so you can think back in time, shot, time snapshots and go, wait, I think my loop, I think my loop here is starting to lay down. Why am I losing compliance? Now the flip side of this is, is if your loop is standing up in this manner, then that's an increase in compliance. It should only be standing up like this if you have a situation where your patient has overly compliant lungs. Not normal compliance, over compliant, which, which should bring to mind right now maybe a certain disease process, perhaps emphysema, that says, oh, that's right, their lungs get big and floppy and they lose the elasticity and they become overly compliant. So you see where they will have more of an upright approach on this pressure volume loop. Now, if they get a pneumonia, huh, they may fall down here to normal. So you have to be able to recognize what is my patient's normal, what are their normal compliance if you're dealing with an emphysematic, almost expecting to see this in an upright position. Now, the last thing we want to talk about here is if you ever see this protrusion on the front side right here or the back side, it can come back and kind of do like this. Either way, if the pressure volume loop gets wider, okay? So if you compare this loop to this loop, you would agree that this loop is much wider than this loop. That's because this person here has an increase in airway resistance. So remember, Compliance is different than airway resistance. When we're talking about compliance, we're talking about integrity of alveoli. So if we lose that integrity, then we'll see changes in a more vertical or more horizontal appearance. But if we're talking about problems in the airway, then we will see where we get this protrusion on the front side or the back side. Um, and this is just a separation between inspiratory resistance and expiratory resistance. Okay, so if you have somebody with a really small endotracheal tube, then don't be surprised if you see this and it's because the airway resistance from the endotracheal tube is creating this appearance, okay? So let me, let me uh, clarify this here real quick for you. you. Just go back over it. This is normal. This is normal here. Fishtail appearance, look at your sensitivity or assess for neural distress. Bird beak appearance, look at your tidal volume because you're over distending the alveoli. If it's laying down, decrease compliance. If it's standing up, increase compliance. If you have an increased width of your pressure volume loop, you're looking at increase in airway resistance. And those are the key points of the pressure volume loop that you really need to know. Now, as you dive further into this, we can talk more about finding optimal PEEP or at least optimal PEEP ranges in, in, in usage with other markers of optimal PEEP. But for the most part, those are the one, two, three, four points of the pressure volume loop you need to be able to recognize when taking care of your patients. Now, all right, so let's take a look here at a practice question. We can break this question down and see what it's gonna ask us related to the pressure volume loop. Your patient is receiving Continuous mechanical ventilation in the VCAC mode, you observe the following pressure volume loop. Which of the following is most likely to be the cause of your observations? Now, first thing you want to do is circle some key words here. Most likely. You see, sometimes some people who write test questions, they get tricky and say, which of the following may be the least likely? 
So you want to always be certain that you're answering the question. The question is asking, you see this pressure volume loop, which of these four answers is the most likely to be the cause of this finding? Pause this video right now, see if you know the answer, and come back, see if you get it correct. I'm going to continue. Now what we notice here is that we have a bird beak's appearance. That's really the only thing that I see abnormal. If I was to draw a line here, i say, okay, I'm about at a 45 degree angle. It's not too bad. I don't see a fishtail. I don't see an increase in hysteresis or a widening of the loop. The only thing I notice here is that bird beak appearance. So let's go through these one at a time. Answer number A, failure to trigger. Well, what would that look like? Oh, you see, that would be back here on this side, and perhaps you wouldn't get that breath that actually happens. So it's not a failure to trigger. That would be associated with the fishtail appearance. Bronchospasm. Okay, well, let's think about this. Joe didn't say anything about bronchospasm. Well, no, I didn't, but I did say increase in airway resistance, which is what a bronchospasm would cause. We would see this belly coming more way out like that. We don't see that, and so it's not a bronchospasm. Maybe excessive tidal volume. Oh, that's right. Excessive tidal volume can lead to over distension and we need to turn that tidal volume down. That's going to be the correct answer here. Answer D, decreased compliance. That means that this loop would have shifted downwards, become more horizontal. We don't see that happening. And so the answer here is that we have an excessively set tidal volume and we need to reduce the setting of the title volume. That's the correct answer to this one. Now again here, let's go to question number two. Feel free to pause this, answer the question, come back to it. We're gonna go ahead and break it down. Your patient is receiving continuous mechanical ventilation in the VCAC mode. You observe the following pressure volume loop. Which of the following is most indicated to perform? Okay, so see, now we're being asked for the most indicated to do. See, they want us to do something now. So when we look at this, we don't see a bird beat. We don't see a fishtail. It looks like it's at about a 45 degree angle, but it does look more wide. So we're thinking increase in airway resistance. That's all we got to do now. We know what is being indicated now by the loop. Now let's go find the answer that solves an increase in airway resistance. Answer number one, decrease tidal volume. Nope. That would have been the answer to the previous question if it was asking us what to do. Didn't ask that. This is not the answer. Adjust sensitivity. Nope, that would be back here. We don't see anything like that. Increase flow. Nope, again, it would be back here. We don't see anything about flow or flow hunger or anything like that, which leaves us answer D, which is give a bronchodilator. Giving a bronchodilator will help us to reduce the airway resistance that is present, hopefully help fix this patient and this finding associated with the pressure volume loop. That's the pressure volume loop. This is where you can find me. Respiratory Coach on Instagram, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, Coach RT at Twitter, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Write this down, or to write all of it down actually, Join me on all of them, but do me a favor. Send me an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com today if you want the cheat sheet associated with not just the pressure volume loop, but the flow volume loop, the volume waveform, the flow waveform, and the pressure waveform. We've been covering over the last several weeks. The series is now complete. I will send you that cheat sheet. All you have to do is ask for it in an email to respiratorycoach at respiratorycoach at gmail.com. If you're interested in joining my texting platform, text this number right here. I will say hi to you. I will tell you happy birthday. And I will occasionally, it won't blow you up, but I will occasionally send you inspirational, motivational, educational content to your phone in your hand just to help continuing to promote excellence amongst the respiratory therapy 
community. I appreciate you watching. I thank you for being here. Share this video as many places as you can. Hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so now. This is a wonderful community we have here on YouTube. Would love for you to be a part of it. And as always, leave me a comment. I can't wait to respond to you. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.